In today's video, I'm going to talk about malaria and anomaly. I'm going to accentuate the basic uh, here and we using many illustration and analogy to make you understand better. So please press the thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. So first of all, you can imagine the reproductive system, how is how it is made. You have to have the formation and for to form, you need the cells. My analogy here is there are two bowls of, uh, that consist of progenitor cells within it. And then when you pour it down, it's going to be spilled like this. After it put down, it's going to, it's begin to fuse. After it fuse, we need to to make a unification by doing the cleavage here from the bottom up. And this is how simply it is made. If we can summarize this whole process in a short term, you need the formation because you need the cells to form and then you need the fusion and then you need the cleavage. That's the three basic uh, mechanism for the formation of the reproductive system in female. This is a short animation, just took a quick review. You need two cells to program their cells, put down, and then it's going to fuse and cleave from the bottom up. Imagine if there's only one cell, only one progenitor cell, one bowl and progenitor cell. This is what we call a failure to form because you only have one or even you have none. You can see here only one pour down. Of course, no need fusion, no need cleavage because you have just one side and you only have one uterus, one horn of the uterus. Um, before I forget, this bowl here represents the kidney. Therefore, it's very high association between kidney agenesis with the Mullerian anomalies. One kidney, one horn of the uterus. This failure to form a group of Mullerian anomaly consists of the Mullerian agenesis, such as in the meyer kitansky koster hosser syndrome, and the unicorn node uterus. Uh, and this is the several types of the unicorn uterus that you can find basically there is a rudimentary horn with connected uh, endometrial cavity or non-connection and the last one is a unicorn uterus with rudimentary horn non-cavitary and the second thing after formation it's fusion so failure to fuse i'm going to talk about failure to fuse can you imagine you have both side of the progenitor cells and the bowl you poured it down but it didn't fuse so you ended up completely to reproductive system which is two surfaces two vaginal canals and uh, two horn of uterus this is what we call Didelphes. What if it's only partially fused? So you will end up with one vagina, one cervix, and two horn of the uterus. Obviously, you know what this is called. This is called bicornuate uterus. And the last part that I'm going to talk about is failure to cleave. So this is the last uh, from the three mechanisms how the Mullerian development, the first one formation, the second one fusion, and the last one is the cleavage. And I'm going to talk about the failure to cleave anomaly here. So if you, if you happen, uh, if the congenital anomaly completely do not fuse, you'll end up with a septate uterus and the subseptate where it's partially cleaved. This is what it looks like. You have a septum in the middle. It's quite similar with the 
picornoid uterus but if i make it side by side from my illustration here you can see there is a complete separation here because it's failure to fuse so it's not fusing however in this septate or subseptate uterus you still see fusion but you have this septum here how it how you you differentiate it you can always google it up from this history of there are many many uh, parameters such as like the angle itself and then the uh, the shape of the horn and other etc etc but the gold standard where um, only on MR that you can uh, see the actual septum and thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to watch my next video.